Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's day 11 of my book. I'm going to be talking all things gothic. Let's get going. Also, do you like my shirt? I don't know if you can see, but this is my shirt. Isn't she so cute? <laughs> but anyways, um, my first book is Gallows Hills by Darcy Coates. The whole family has all the Gallows Hill winery for generations, living and working on the beautiful grounds where they grow the famous grapes. Until tonight, until the night Mr. and Mrs. Hall settle down for the evening and are dead by morning. When the daughter Margaret inherits the family business, she wants nothing to do with it. The winery is valid for its unparalleled produce, but it's built on a field where hundreds of convicts were once hanged. And the locals whisper Mormon rumors, they say the ground's cursed. It's been more than a decade since Margaret last saw her childhood home. But now that she's alone at a sprawling, diaplaning building, she begins to believe the curse is more than real, and she may be the next victim of the house that never rests. Also, some of them are like new and old and all that stuff, so I do want to get in here as some of those ones as well. So, yeah. My next one is The Woman in the Dark by Vanessa Savage. Sarah and Patrick are happy. But after her mother's death, Sarah spirals into depression and overdoses on sleeping pills. While Sarah claims it was an accident, her teenage children are unsure. Patrick decides they all need to flesh out and he knows just the place. Since the idyllic family home where he was raised, he and has recently come up for sale. There was only one catch, but in the past 15 years, it has become infamous as the murder house, standing empty after a family was stabbed to death within its walls. Patrick believes they can bring the house back to its former glory, so Sam and Apun inform everything she knows. Pours the energy into painting, gardening, and giving the old, rotten old structure the warmth of home. But with the locals hinting that the house is haunted, the news that the murderer has been paroled, strange writing on the wall, and creeping gifts arriving on the doorstep at odd hours, Sam can't shake the feeling that something just isn't right. Not with the house, not with the town, or even with her own loving husband whose stories about his perfect childhood. Suddenly aren't adding up. This can several uncover secrets of the murder house before another family is destroyed. My next book is The Curse of Penrith Hall by Jess Armstrong. After the Great War, Megan Harris, Ruby Vagu, and made a life for herself, running a rare bookstore alongside her octogen gathering employer and housemate next year. She always avoided dwelling on the past, even before the war, but it always has a way of fighting her. When Mimby is forced to deliver a box of books to a folk healer, living deep in the Cornish countryside, she is rushed, she brought back to the one place she's where she never returned. A most sensible soul would have delivered the package and left without rehashing old rounds. But no one has ever accused Mimby of being sensible. Thus begins her visit to Penrith Hall. My next book is The Fiction Writer by Jillian Cantor. The once rising literary star Olivia Fitzgerald is down on her luck. Her most recent novel, A Retelling of Daphne de Merlier. Daphne de Merlier's Rebecca was a flop. Her boyfriend and nine years just, of nine years just dumped her and she's battling a bad case of writer's block. So when her agent calls her with a high paying ghost writing opportunity, Olivia is all too willing to sign the MBA. At first, the writer for hire job seems too good to be true. All she has to do is interview Henry Ash Asherwood, an inclusive mega billionaire, twice named people's sexiest man alive, who wants, to pay, who wants her help in writing a book that reveals a shocking secret about his late grandmother and Daphne du Maurier. But when Olivia arrives at his Malibu estate, nothing is as it seems. The more Olivia digs into his grandmother's past, the more questions she has. And before she knows it, she's trapped in a gothic mystery of her own. Now, that just sounds really exciting, actually. So, I'm not really sure how to feel about this book. I don't know if I will be reading it. I personally think it's way too overhyped, in all honesty, but I'm still going to show it to you guys in case you guys might be interested. And it's An Education in Malice by S.T. Gibson. Deep in the forgotten hills of Massachusetts stands St. Perpetua's College, isolated and ancient. And it's not for a place for tin girls. Here, secrets of currency and ambition is lifeblood, and strange ceremonies welcome students into the fold. On her first day of class, Laura Sheridan is dressed into an intense academic rivalry with the beautiful and dramatic Carmilla. Together, they are drawn into the coincidence into the confidence of the dramatic poetry professor Della Fortenine, who holds her own dark obsession with Camellia. 
When I survivably blossoms into something far more delicious, a lava must go for her own strange hungers. Tangled in a sinister game of politics, bloodthirsty and professors and dark magic, Lava and Camilla must decide how much they are willing to sacrifice in the ruthless pursuit of knowledge. So I think this is a retail of Phantom of the Opera. I could totally be wrong, but it honestly reminds me of it, and that's Music of the Night by Angela J. Ford. A haunted tower, a mysterious instructor, and the lord of the music of the night. Oh, it is Phantom of the Week till it just said so right here. <laughs> it says, Music of the Night's complete standalone novel inspired by Phantom of the Opera, perfect for fans of dark and steamy fantasy romance. After the death of her father, Aria is left penniless and destitute to avoid walking the streets as she becomes the ward of a count and moves to a remote town called High Tower. High Tower is a gloomy place with one vivid attraction that three of the lords and ladies come from afar to be seduced by a night of unforgettable entertainment. Many are warned to stay away from High Tower dangerous enchantments, but it's a warning Aria is forced to ignore. Determined to take her life back in her hands, she and the count make a deal. She can avoid an arranged marriage if she lives to sing for him. Oh boy. And also speaking of Phantom of the Opera, I hope this is not true, but I I read that Disney is gonna remake Phantom of the Opera. Can we not do it, please? I'm sorry, I love Phantom of the Opera both and for Disney to even think about remaking it. Nah, uh honey, not on my radar. Uh uh. Bye. <laughs> and no, honestly, I don't know why there's so many remakes. Like, I can think about 50 really good plots to have for the movies. Honestly, it's not the hard to use your brain. Like, but yet again, Disney never had any, so. It all went down when Walt Disney went to his grave. My next book is A Haunting on a Hill by Elizabeth Hand. Holly Sherman has been struggling playwright for years. But now after receiving a grant to develop her play which night, she may finally be close to her big break. All she needs is time and space to bring her mission to life. When she stumbles across Hell House on a winking getaway upstate, she is immediately taken in the mansion which is nearly hidden outside a remote village. It's enormous old and ever so eerie, the perfect place to develop and rehearse her play. I'm so sorry it got so dark all of a sudden, the sun keeps coming in and out. I did not put any effects at all, it just how the sun wishes to move, I guess. <laughs> Despite her own hesitations, Holly's girlfriend, Nisa, agrees to join her in renting the house for a month, and soon a trip of actors, each with ghosts of their own alive. Yet, as they settle in the house of peculiarities, I may know strange creatures talk and grounds. Disturbing sounds echo throughout the halls, and time itself seems to shift. All too soon, Holly and her friends are at odds, not just with one but another, but with the house itself. It seems something has been waiting in the Hell House all these years, and it no longer intends to walk alone. My next book is Autumn of the Grimoire by J.L. Lampa. Sam Voyager's cast spells on the Slay King. A mysterious grimoire, a marriage full of dark secrets, a history sculpted by a quartet of ancient sister witches. For 300 years, Sister Autumn has incited wars, burned villages, killed kings, and released plagues at the bidding of the Grimoire. Meanwhile, her sister Winter, Sister Spring, and Sister Summer have brought forth only peace. When an order from the Grimoire stands together to the Kingdom of Marvel, she already anticipates the wars. Unless she wants to face the wrath of the goddess, and get them, must keep her head down and do as she commanded. But when the Grimoire orders her to marry a Pomponius prince and play the role of a peasant accepted by vicious aristocrats, she finds herself at the center of a war between the classes and an old age prophecy. Within the court, many players harbor dark secrets, including her new husband with her newfound influence, and gather joint forces the city's blacklisted in order to blur the blinds between a common man and the elite. And remember the mysteries in her marriage and decides once and for all she will defy her grandma and face the brutal consequences. And my next book is A Blood Confession by Alyssa M. Libby. Drawn from the true story of a 17th century countess who bathed herself in human blood to preserve her looks forever, 
This jelly novel combining gothic and horror mo and romance follows beautiful Elizabeth as she tells the whole story of her life while waiting to be sentenced for murder. My next book is Girls of Dragon Hill by Kay Moriarty. When Hannah's melody son dies in a car accident, she returns to her family's castle in the Catskills, and the epicenter of her childhood trauma, her sisters are solved in disappearance. It's been 17 years, and though the desperate to start a new life, want to finance, Hannah is compelled to question the events of her last summer at Bracken Hill. When a human born is found near the estate, Hannah is convinced it belongs to her long sister. She launches her own investigation into the magical summer and ends it in a nightmare. A strange happening prying the castle, Hannah uncovers disturbing details about the past and startling realizations about her own repressed childhood memories. And my last book is The Skeleton Key by Evan Kelly. This reunion with Teal and Family Apart. December 2021. Neil, Nell has come home and her family's insistence to celebrate an anniversary. Fifty years ago, her father wrote the Golden Bones. Part picture book, part treasure hunt, so Frank Church a queen, a fairy story, a fairy story about Ellen Yon, a murdered woman whose skeleton was scattered all over England. Clues and puzzles in the pages of the Golden Bones led readers to seven states when jewels were buried, and gold and precious stones, each a different part of a skeleton. One by one, tiny golden bones with the gravito and Lenore's pelvis remained hidden. The book was a sensation. A community of treasure hunters called the Bone Hunters formed. In French competition, they were obsessed to a dangerous degree. People sold their homes to travel to England and search for Illinois. Marriages broke down as a quest to consume people. A man died. The book made Frank a rich man. Stalked by fans who could not tell fantasy from reality, he started to nail become a recluse. Okay, so yeah, that's kind of dangerous in itself if a fan can't, you know, differentiate between fantasy and reality. That's kind of dangerous, so best of luck. <laughs> but I guess all the gothic books, mystery, horror, I guess, so all, all things gothic that you are seeing in here, so otherwise, let me know what are your gothic needs and please like, comment, subscribe so you'll be notified every time I post and I will see you tomorrow for day 12. Tomorrow for day 12 is an exciting one. You don't want to miss. So I will see you then. Bye!